This is my DIY electronic load. It has five modes of operation. Constant current, constant power, constant resistance, transient and battery capacity measurement. Now I connected my power supply to the load's input. Let's go to the constant current mode and turn the load on. On the LCD we can see the measured voltage, current, power as well as the temperature of the heatsink of my load. We can change the current using the encoder. Or we could use the keypad. And of course, as the voltage changes, the current stays the same. But to be able to take full 8 amps, the voltage has to be greater than around 1 volt. There's also this pair of terminals for remote voltage sensing to eliminate the voltage drop on these power cables. And now the remote sense is off. Now I turn it on and as you can see the voltage drop drastically reduced. And it's much closer to the voltage under no load. This load can take up to 50 volts and 8 amps of course obeying the 300 watt limit and when the heatsink of this load is over 30 degrees the fan turns on and cools down the heatsink and it's of course temperature controlled and as the temperature rises the fan speed increases. Now, let me briefly show you all the other modes. Constant power. As you can see, as I change the voltage, the current changes accordingly. And the consumed power always stays at the set value. That is until I reach to such low voltage that the current reaches its maximum and the power drops below the set value. Constant resistance. Now as I change the voltage, the current rises linearly with the voltage. Transient response. There are three modes, continuous, pulse and toggle. In the continuous mode, the load constantly toggles between the low value and the high value, with the period we set. And as always, we can use the encoder or the keypad to change all the values. I'm using this key to toggle between the three values we can change. Pulse. The load switches from low value to the high value of current for the set amount of time. The trigger for now is this button, but in the future I will use this BNC to take a trigger signal. And the toggle mode. The load switches between the low and high value of current with every trigger signal. Last but not least, there's battery measurement mode. 
First we have to enter the cutoff voltage, let's say 3 volts. Now we can also change the discharging current. And let's start the load. As you can see the timer started and the milliamp hours are increasing. Now if we drop the voltage below the cutoff voltage, the load will disconnect. And we get our reading 16 milliamp hours. We can clear this reading by pressing delete. Thanks to a 16-bit ADC I used in this load, the voltage and current measurements are very precise. I calibrated this load against this multimeter and even after over a year, their readings didn't drift apart at all. You might have noticed that the set current and actual current don't match exactly. This is because of the 12-bit DAC used here, which at maximum of 8.4 amps gives a resolution of 2 milliamps. On top of that, the DAC has some non-linearity, which could be countered by closing the control loop in the software. The cold air enters from the sides and it exits on the back of this device. On the back there is a main socket as well as a USB port for programming and serial communication. And this is how it looks from the bottom. It stands on four rubber feet. On the inside there is this huge heatsink with four power MOSFETs mounted to its side. There's also this NTC thermistor for overheat protection. I used an Arduino Nano with its microcontroller removed as a serial converter. The brain of this device is an 80 mega 328p which in combination with a 12-bit DAC controls this constant current sink which is an analog circuit. The constant power and constant resistance modes are realized in software. To be able to measure time precisely for the battery measurement mode, there's a real-time clock I see. I designed this PCB in Eagle and this enclosure in Fusion 360. This metal case was manufactured locally and this front panel was 3D printed. The code for this device was written in C++ in VS Code with Platform IO. This project is still in development, though it is already perfectly usable as it is right now. I am mainly planning on improving a few things in the code. All the files for this project, including PCB design, 3D models and code, are available on my GitHub. Link in the description. Feel free to share your thoughts on this project.